Of all the places where I get ideas for videos here on the channel, one of the most frequent and common is questions that you guys have about Sublime Text and how to use it. And today's video is no different because recently in the comments section of a video, someone asked if there was a way to easily chain multiple builds together instead of having to trigger them manually one right after the other. And there's a few different things we can do to speed up this particular workflow. And if you keep watching, I'll show you what they are. <music> Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nader, and welcome to this week's video where we're going to be answering a question that you guys asked down in the comments section of a previous video. Or rather, one particular person asked. We've been talking about build systems lately, and this question has to do with a person that has multiple build systems that they need to execute in order to get their work done, one after the other after the other which requires manual intervention and can be a little bit tedious. And the gist of the question is, is there a way to chain multiple builds together so that you can carry out these sort of options a little bit easier? Ideally, with the idea that subsequent builds should only execute if the previous one succeeded. Let's look into how we can actually do something like that. Now, the question that was asked is based on the Make program, which is commonly used by developers of C and C++ to control how their programs are compiled. So that's what the example is going to be here today. But not to worry, because everything you're going to learn here applies to any sort of build system, regardless of the programming language that you happen to be using, even if you're not using any programming language at all, and you're just executing some sort of helper program outside of Sublime Text. Everything will still apply. Now, we're going to assume that you know how build systems work and how to create one. And if you're unfamiliar with that, check down in the description, because there's a link to a playlist all about build systems and we'll have all the information that you need in there. Also, in a moment, we're going to be talking about key bindings and, in particular, the power tip of binding keys to execute build actions, which is something that a lot of people know. There's videos for that linked down in the description as well. Now, here's an example of a build system that we're going to be using throughout this example. It's modeled on the question that was originally asked, though probably not entirely the same. And this is just an extension to the built-in build system for make files that ships directly with Sublime Text. We just added an extra variant in here that allows you to run a program by executing a different make target. This also requires you to update your make file to have such an item in it as well. But with this in place, we can easily decide based on our whims to either build the software or if we have executed the build previously and we want to run it, we can use build with and select the run option to execute the program. And at any point, if we want to clear up any build artifacts in this particular example, we can also execute the clean as well, also by using build with. And clearly this works, but it's not that great, particularly if you happen to be editing a file for which there are multiple file types, because as we've seen here, there's a lot of builds that appear that apply to C files in this particular case. You can mitigate that somewhat by going into the tools build system menu and specifying the exact build system that should be used instead of automatic. And then Sublime will constrain itself to showing you only build variants from that one particular build file. But we can do better. One way to do something like that would be to have more targeted key bindings that allow you to build, run, or clean depending on your particular need without having to constantly switch the build system. This is how some IDEs work, for example. So it can be a very popular workflow for that reason. We can actually do something like this in Sublime Text by providing key bindings on the build command, which is, as I said, something that we've covered previously in another video on the channel, not something that a lot of people know about. You'll find that video linked down in the description and probably in a card up there, assuming I remember to actually put it in there. But what we can do is have bindings such as these. Now, you'd probably want to choose keys that are more suitable for you, but the takeaway from this is that we can specify that when this particular key is pressed, we can execute a build system and execute a particular variable variant inside of that build system, either executing the build by specifying no variant or running or cleaning, depending on the variant that has been provided. And now if we jump back to the previous example that we were looking at, when we're looking at the code, we can press a key and build the code just like that. Once it's built, we can press the key to run it and we can run it as many times as we like, not just one without having to worry about it building all the time. And then when you need to make some changes, if you need to, you can clean as well in this example. It's a nice little bonus. Now, of course, the question that was originally asked was about executing multiple builds one after the other, presumably without having to press a key between each one of these. And this, of course, is also possible. The easiest way to do something like that, which we're not going to describe here, is to create either a batch file if you're on Windows or a shell script if you're on Linux or Mac OS that has all of the actions that you'd like to take, however complicated they might be, and then make your build system execute the shell script instead of executing the tool directly. But we can do something like this directly within Sublime Text. 
And we can do that by taking advantage of shell command in our build and how the shell command, as the name suggests, uses the operating system's shell, be it on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, to execute the program. And all shells across all operating systems have the ability to execute multiple programs one after the other, including making sure that they don't continue to run if the previous one failed. So if we revisit the previous example, we can see that all we have to do is make a slight modification here. Now in this example, what we've done is we've modified the run to be build and run instead. So the name of the variant has changed. And we'll note that the shell command has this ampersand ampersand in it. This is shell shorthand for please run the first program and then run the second program, but only if the first program succeeded. So if the first thing that's executed fails, the whole operation stops. And based on this, you would modify key bindings as appropriate, such as this. Now there is just one for building and one for cleaning, and the build will automatically do the uh, run for you as well. And with that, we jump back into our code. We can press a single key. It will build. It will execute. If we were to break the code by, say, removing a semicolon, that's important. When we press the key, it'll try to rebuild because it noticed the file is different and it fails. And then doesn't try to run it because the build failed. And then we can put the semicolon back and run the program again, and it'll build and execute exactly the way that we might like. Now, of course, this is just a simple example. You can extend this in any way that you might like. For example, you might want a variant that does a build, one that does a run, and one that does a build and a run. If the build process or even checking to see if the build should happen takes a while, then you still have the opportunity to build explicitly, run explicitly, and build and run all in one step. The world is your oyster when it comes to something like this. Remember, this could be extended to any build system, not just one using make or one using programming tools, absolutely anything. These key bindings that we're using here will also work with project specific builds as well. And it'll even work if you actually have multiple physical distinct builds, not just variants as well, which is also something to keep in mind. Now, in the spirit of the question that was originally asked, is it possible to have multiple build systems or multiple build variants, which are distinct, but which execute one after the other, after the other, but only if previous ones succeed? Well, no, not in Core Sublime anyway. For that, you would need some sort of facilitating plugin to drive and coordinate everything. And if you're interested in something like that, you might be interested in knowing that in tonight's live stream, right here on this very channel at 8 p.m. Pacific tonight, we're going to be playing around with creating something like that. So you may want to tune in for that. And if we come up with a plugin that works, you'll find that linked down in the description after the live stream is over. That's all I have for this week. I hope you found this useful and it's going to take your building to the next level and make your life that much easier. And until the next live stream or the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.